corporation tax transactions in Xero, do you get them right? The reason I'm asking is because many people don't watch this video and you'll see what you need to do when you're entering corporation transactions in Xero. This video is not a lesson on corporation tax, but it's probably worthwhile covering a few things before we head into zero. So first of all, we're going to be dealing with limited companies here. If you're a sole trader, you don't pay corporation tax. So corporation tax is going to be based on your profits for a financial year. So first of all, your accounts need to be up to date and they need to be accurate. You will have a profit and loss account. We'll be able to look at that profit and loss account in zero and we're expecting it to be up to date and to be accurate. Then what you do is you take your account and profit and you do some adjustments and you arrive at your taxable profit. Now I would expect an accountant to do this for you. So then you know what tax you're going to pay for the year. It'll be your taxable profit and it'll be based on a percentage, depending on what the government have decided. At the moment, corporation tax rate is 19%. So we arrive at the corporation tax that you're due to pay based on your financial year. And normally that would be paid nine months later. I might do a video later explaining more about corporation tax. If you find that would be helpful, let me know in the comments. So let's head into zero and take a look at corporation tax transactions. So the first place I'm going to go is I'm going to go to the chart of accounts. And I'm wondering what do we have in here for corporation tax? I'm using the standard zero chart of accounts. If I search for corporation tax, this is what I find. I find two codes, a 500 code. Now, zero says it's an overhead. Tax is not really an overhead, but we just have to live with that. And the second code is an 800 code. Zero calls it provision for corporation tax. So the main difference between these two codes is the 500 code goes to your profit and loss account. So that would show you how much your tax is in the year. And then the other side of that entry goes to your balance sheet because it's a liability that you need to pay, that you'll be paying to HMRC nine months later. So let's take a quick look. We're going to go to the profit and loss account. I'm using the new style reports as much as possible because we know that the old style ones are going to be retired. So what I have is a profit and loss account for my previous financial year. And we just look at it and what we can see at this stage there's nothing in here. It says profit before tax and profit after tax. If we look at our admin costs, there's nothing here that says corporation tax. So corporation tax at this stage has not been dealt with. If corporation tax was here in your layout, I would choose to edit the layout and make sure it appears in the right place under the taxation section. So we've worked out what our corporation tax is for the year. And that's going to be entered into zero as a manual journal. So we're going to go to accounting and we're going to go to manual journals. Hopefully you've got access to manual journals. If you haven't, you go to accounting, you go to reports, you search for the journal report, pick it up. And in that report, you have an option to add a new journal. And here's my journal for the year and I'm going to talk you through it. So narrative, very straightforward, corporation tax for the year. The date of the journal is going to be the year end date. In my case, my year end is the 30th of April. So 30th of April, 22, and there's simply going to be two lines on my journal. The first line is going to be the profit and loss code, the 500 code, and that's going to be a debit because it's an expense to the business and the corporation tax due for this business, Happy Housewares, for the year ending 30th of April 2022, we've worked out is £550. The other side of the entry, the credit side of the manual journal, is going to be to 830 provision for corporation tax, and that's a credit amount. It's a liability that you're due to pay of £550. So that is pretty straightforward, but you need to get that information and you need to make sure it's in your zero account. If you're a business owner doing your own accounting in zero, you probably need to get this from your accountant or your accountant might have access to your zero and might enter this journal. So we're going to post 
and that's the journal entered. So what changes now is when we go back to our profit and loss account, still for the previous financial year, when we scroll down, we've got our admin costs as before. And now on the taxation section, we have corporation tax of 550 and our profit after tax 3758. So that's the first thing that you'd expect to be entered in zero for corporation tax. Okay, the other report I want to take a look at in zero is the balance sheet. So accounting and I've saved it as the new format balance sheet. Okay, so the balance sheet is at the end of the last financial year. That's fine, 30th of April. And if we scroll down, we get to creditors, the amounts that we're due to pay within a year. And here we have the liability provision for corporation tax. We can see our £550 shown there. So fast forward. And this is not due to be paid for nine months, but what we've actually done, we've paid it a bit earlier, simply because I'm not nine months past the 30th of April recording this today. So I'm going to say that we made the payment to HMRC on the 31st of August. So it's going to feed through, we've got a bank feed, it's going to feed into zero, and all that we need to do is code it. So we're on the create tab, it's not difficult. The payment is to HMRC. Oh, we've not paid them before. That's interesting. We'll say a new contact. Hopefully you will have HMRC set up already. And then we're looking for a tax code. So if we type the word corp, and this is where so many zero users get this wrong. Why wouldn't you pick up code 500? And the reason is because the code 500 is the cost that's already been entered in zero. And what we want to do here is we want to pick up the provision for corporation tax. So it's the 800 code that we want. And you can put a description if you want, corporation tax for year end, 30th of April, 2022. And I'm going to say, okay. So if we go back to our balance sheet, and it's defaulting to last year, so there isn't any change. It's going to show the 550. But if we change the date, let's choose the end of last month. Update. And now when we look carefully down to the creditors section, there's nothing due for corporation tax. The other interesting thing, if we go to accounting and to the profit and loss account, and this time I'm going to say the current financial year. There's not a lot in here at all, but there's nothing in here for corporation tax. Whereas if you had made a mistake, if you had coded your payment incorrectly, the £550 would appear as if it was a cost for the current year. And that is clearly incorrect. So let's do a very quick recap to the chart of accounts. If we search for corporation tax, we've got two codes for corporation tax. Code 500 is your profit and loss code and you would expect a manual journal to be entered there with the amount that's due relating to a financial year. Then also your manual journal will show the liability that you're due to pay to HMRC. That will go to code 830 and when you make your payment to HMRC, this is the important thing, make sure that you code it to 830 not to, as so many people do, code 500. Hope you find the video useful and remember I'm always available for one-to-one -one coaching if you need that. Until the next video, happy zeroing.